you are bienvenue. G'day, my name is Champagne Jane. I've come from Australia to speak here at the Harper's Third Champagne Summit. So this morning I was talking about how to put the sex, glamour and fizz back into champagne. And this afternoon I conducted Harper's first champagne social media masterclass. So we took a sensory journey around the whole region of champagne, from grower styles, monovarietal, through to zéro de sage, through to vintage and depressive cuvée. We tasted seven different styles of champagne together and we tweeted as we tasted, um, broadcasting videos, images and also articles. And at the same time, under the special hashtag CJCS12, we also conducted a virtual tweet chat, as I might call it, with New York and Sydney. So we had tastings going on in three countries around the world talking about the wonders of champagne. And what, what do you think, that's fantastic and it was really interesting, but what do you think is the real relevance of social media to such a traditional region? I think what's most interesting about champagne is it's always been associated with power and glory and riches. But here in the 21st century, the paradigm of communication has changed. You can no longer hide behind a mask of exclusivity or luxury. People are actually consumers, the trend, everybody's demanding more information. We get more than 30,000 messages a day in order to actually connect and engage with brands and with products. We need to know the personal stories. We need to be allowed to have a voice. And the wonderful thing about social media, it allows you to pay attention to what people are saying. It allows you to engage audiences. It helps you with customer service. And of course, it can help you build loyalty to the brand because there's nothing better than somebody recommending what you are, what you do, or your champagne to their friends because people actually, 73% of consumers will believe in other referrals rather than advertising. And one of the audience members said that he could spend his whole life just focusing on social media. How do you think you incorporate it into a sort of just a general, let's say a small business with only one or two members of staff? How do you do it on a sort of daily basis? Well, that's a very interesting question because it is a bit of a vortex and it can be a bit of an echo chamber. And you can get so carried away with talking to people in New York and Sydney and God knows where else that you don't actually get on with the day-to-day -day running of your job. But when you think about it, how many of us are small businesses? I'm a solo entrepreneur myself. How many of us can afford to do PR and marketing or advertising? So the power of word of mouth of referrals is incredible. As long as you're authentic and engaged and considerate and you collaborate in what you say. So as long as you're prepared to share the message but control the destination, you could actually do social media in five to 10 minutes a day, five minutes at the beginning of the day, five minutes at the end of the day, and it just allows you to build a platform to then strengthen your brand communications. And this is this something that Champenoise are fully behind, or are you sort of leading the charge? Um, I think that the champagne industry is very much aware of what's happening out there on social media platforms because the CIBC in the UK has been active on Twitter for more than a year now and the CIBC in the US is also active. I have to say I haven't seen any activity from the um, Australian Bureau and the new head of the CIBC, Thibault Le Mayu, who replaced Daniel Lawson in April of last year. Um, he's actually got his own personal account and it was only, I think it was either sometime in January this year that Champagne launched its official Twitter account but they haven't made a big noise and they don't have a whole heap of followers right now and I think as always um, when you're the bastion of the industry you've kind of got to be a little bit conservative in your yeah. approach so they're watching at the moment rather than participating. So somebody like you is sort of basically leading the way and kind of doing your own thing and they, they will probably pick up on it. I think you could call it thought leadership in the sense that um, leadership really is showing how you can add value to a community as opposed to just espousing a particular doctrine. And with me, um, it's authentic because I'm a practitioner, I've been active in social media on behalf of clients because I come from a media background um, since 2008. And so, al although I wouldn't call myself a, a digital media expert, I know exactly how to do it and what to do and, and how, because I've done Champagne Day, I created a a hashtag in a, an online global event for this event because Richard asked me to come and show the UK champagne industry how to engage online. And you are a champagne expert too? Yes. 
Okay, I've studied in Champagne, I've written an award winning book, and my life is about Champagne. I write about Champagne, I speak about Champagne, I teach about Champagne, and I talk about Champagne on TV and radio. That's brilliant. That's why I'm Champagne James. That's, so that's, thank you so much. Can you just tell us your Twitter name again? Please? My Twitter name, everywhere I'm Champagne Jane, at Champagne Jane, and it's Jane with a Y. So Champagne Jane on Facebook. Champagne Jane on Twitter, Champagne Jane Powell on LinkedIn, and my website is www.champagnejane.com. Fantastic, thank you so much. My pleasure, cheers.